topic for today is the glory of God. The glory of God. And when God was speaking to me, God told me, the glory of God is not what man can describe. It means it is beyond description. It is beyond the intelligence. It is beyond the capacity of the brain of man to fathom, to put together. In fact, words are too... The words of man is too limited to describe. The languages on earth here, they are too limited. We don't have enough dictions or words with meaning that can carry the true fullness, the true description of the glory of God. So we can only try and communicate it the way we understand. When we even encounter the, the glory of His presence, we can't explain to human language, we just try and see how we can communicate it. So God told me, He said, my glory carries the description of me. The description of me in my honor. My glory carries the description of me in my honor. It means that God's glory carries the description of God himself in the fullness of his honor, in the fullness of his reverence. We are healing dokas in the heart. A dimension of reverence that is beyond... <laughs> What even we man, we are still giving God. No, God is bigger than every existing thing. His place is high. He's mighty. See how people reference kings, presidents, you know, people that have positions on it. See how they bow, they worship them. Now, come, let's not talk of God. Sometimes even with the children of God, we'll be worshipping, we we'll saying, I glorify you, I bow down, worship. But we are not describing it enough physical even our heart is not really fully in it but because when we truly do it we cannot but see god so he told me said my glory is beyond the description of any living thing these are definitions from god himself god was defining it to me by himself So God's glory is beyond the description of any living thing. So it takes God to even let one know, as in, it takes God to give one understanding of, of what His glory is about. So it's not what we can even toil it with as man. It's not what we can handle to manage as man. His glory can only be managed by Him. Hey. Thank you, Miss Phil. He told me, he said, when my glory is revealed, no man can order or control it. When the glory of God is revealed, no man can order or control it. God is bigger than what we know him to be. He's just far, far way bigger. No matter the much of knowledge of God that we have, no matter how much we've known him, he's still bigger than what we know. He's the side he revealed to us that we know. Is the is the Length to which he, he, he revealed himself to us that we know we don't know the totality of God. The Bible says, For his ways are past finding out. You can't search him out. I said, He's decided to reveal himself to you. You can't summon God. He's God. He's the king of all the hell, the king of heaven, the king of every existing thing. He created all things. All things are, were made by him, they are from him. And we made through him. So that God is too big for man to comprehend. But he has granted us the privilege to know him to some extent to which we can relate with him, worship him, serve him, 
who can have relationship with him. It is beyond the words, the language, and the ability for man to express. That is the glory of God. The glory of God is beyond the words, the language, and the ability for man to express. So the way we have ascribed, expressed or described the glory of God, different people, is to the extent to which they can communicate it. Is bigger than as it is written. If God takes us to the world, to the realm of what is written of His glory, we can't still explain with our natural words the fullness of what we see. So God told me, said, when my glory is revealed, angels bow to worship, and men also ought to worship and reverence me. So when the glory of God is revealed, angels bow to worship. They bow to worship God. And men also ought to worship God and reverence God. I said, fine, not that men don't worship God, but I said, the magnitude, the dimension of worship that will measure up to that glory that is revealed. Sometimes men don't always get to that fullness because we are, we are, we are concerned with too many things. That's why when we set out to kind of pray, to praise, to worship God, or to have a time out with God, we should empty ourselves of every body, of every concern, of every anxiety, and make sure that our total focus is, is God. So we can enjoy all He brings our way. And when His glory is revealed, we will not be lost in thought or lost in anything. But we're fully part of the, the fulfillment of His glory at that moment. So God told me, said, my glory is revealed everywhere. I, God, is enthroned. The glory of God is revealed everywhere God is enthroned. Everywhere God is accepted as the God of their lives, of the God of the place. Every home where God is accepted, every life where God is accepted and enthroned, where God is the ruler, where God directs the affairs, where God dictates all things, where God determines all things, where God is the king of that life or that home, of that family, or that business, or that nation, or that people. Yekiva Santo Liba Shanda. The glory of God will be revealed continually there. So anyone that sets his or life to, 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 to for God to be enthroned, for God is how to have his way, to for God to make his, his or life his throne, hey, Yakabo Santali Bashanda, God will be revealed at will as he wants. So many times his man has not given up God room. God wants to fellowship with us. Just like he comes in the cool of the day to fellowship with Adam and Eve. He created us for his own pleasure, to have fellowship, to have fun. Because many times we are too concerned with many activities. And sometimes we want to run the race with our own strength. We want to have our own pleasure, not God's own pleasure. So we don't enthrone him as Lord of all in our lives. Though we say it in our mouth. But in reality, that is not the situation. That's why I say, for the drawn enemy with their lips, but, and their heart is far from me. So when, wherever God is enthroned, hey, I think give you room to operate, to do the affairs and everything, the totality of one's life, or if it's a home or a people or a nation, of course, the glory of God will be revealed. See the case of the Israelites. The glory of God was revealed constantly in their midst. The times that they serve God with the whole of their being, where they walk uprightly before God. Not walking the way of perdition, walking in righteousness. I 
and anywhere the glory of God is being revealed, blessings flow, testimonies flow, peace flow. The glory of God self will flow into the life of the people or the person, and person's life will be an extension of the glory of God. And joy also flow. So that one's life will be a fruit, a fruit of the extension of God on earth. Most life will be a full communication of what it is to have God. Then God himself will not command his will, his counsel, and his plan to prevail continually in that life or in the family, or in the people, or in the church, or, or anywhere God is being enthroned, and His glory is being revealed. You see, when the children of God goes there, when they praise and they worship, and they worship, and they praise God, even with trumpets, with cymbals, tambourines, all musical instruments, the glory of God comes down, and God heals them, God fights their battle, God takes care of their concerns, and also establish his own will, what he wants to do in their midst. That's how it is still now. Why people have not yet seen the glory of God, or are not seen it as often as they ought to, is because God has not been given room. God told me, said, my glory is a sign of my visitation upon men. So God's glory is a sign of visitation upon men. It's well. So God told himself, my glory is me. <laughs> that means that God's glory is God himself. So God expressing himself through his glory. So God's glory is God himself. That is God expressing himself through his glory. So it is an extension of God himself. It's, it's like wherever a king is, there will be honor. There will be glory. There will be beauty. You see people honor him here and there. How much more the king of all kings. The king that has been the king that is even beyond and above eternity itself. Hey, So wherever God is, his glory will be there. So wherever the glory of God is, God is there. So his glory is actually in, as you have said. And God told me, he said, those that walk in the path of holiness, we see my glory. We see my glory. We see my glory. God stressed that word. He said, those that walk in the path of holiness, we see my glory. We see my glory. We see my glory. So, anyone that wants to see the glory of God, should walk in the path of holiness. You can't also walk in the path of holiness without having a right standing with God. Without reference to God, we can't walk in the fear of God. They all walk hand in hand. We can't walk in obedience. Without loving God Himself. Without having a relationship or intimacy with God. So all these things come together for us to be able to truly be separated from the world. Because to be holy means to be consecrated unto God, to be separated from the world. And a holy thing cannot have the status of iniquity. A holy thing cannot have the status of unrighteousness. The ho a holy thing cannot have the status of disobedience. A holy thing cannot have a, 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 a status of rebellion towards God. So that to walk in the path of holiness, we abstain from sin. We abstain from sin, things that defy us. We abstain from mingling and allowing ourselves to go in the way of the world. Fine, he has sent us as sheep among wolves. We are all on that yet. We are not supposed to not live in the way of the world. We are not supposed to allow the loss of the world to overtake us. So, 
So if we want to see his glory, then we should walk in his holiness. That's why I stress this, that those that walk in the holiness, in the path of holiness, I mean, that's why I stress it. Those that walk on the path of holiness will see my glory and see my glory and see my glory. That means that they will keep seeing and seeing and seeing the glory of God so long they keep walking and walking and walking on the path of holiness. So if we have not seen his glory, it means we have not walked on the path of holiness. So if you check our lives, So therefore, everyone that wants to see the glory of God should walk in holiness. Because God told me, he said, walk in holiness, walk in holiness, walk in holiness, and you will see my glory. So everyone that wants to see the whole glory of God should continue to walk in holiness. Walking in holiness should be the person's lifestyle, way on life, and also if it to continue in forever as long as we are next yeah as long as he has given us life i round up with this scripture hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. So, God has given us the way out, is the way of holiness. Then we will see Him. Then we will see His glory. Then we will see His beauty. We will enjoy God. And we can't afford to kind of miss that out in our Christian work. And if anyone have tasted of the glory of God, have seen the glory of God, you want to dwell there forever. So it's a beautiful thing to be exposed to the glory of God, to see His glory. I've seen it several, several times. And I long to see it all the days of my life and to continue to see it until I go and meet Him and continue to see and enjoy His glory fully. But there's something that can be compared with His glory. I've not seen anything that's compared to the glory of God. As I told by Sataya, in this little time I've worked with God, I've not seen, I've not seen anything that can even, that can even swallow up the importance, the, 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 the kind of magnitude of the importance of the glory of God. I can't see nothing can compete with it. Nothing I've been able to substitute it in my life. Nothing has been able to stand it. So the glory of God is real. And it's, it's bigger. I don't know how to explain it. Sir. <laughs> it's bigger than any other thing that man should experience as achievement on it. No matter what you have achieved on it, naturally, if you have not seen his glory, oh, you are missing a lot. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want us to pray. Paraventure. God has been waiting. He wants to reveal His glory. But we have not walked in the path to allow His glory to flow. Oh, we have been designing His glory. But some, somehow, somehow, it's as if we are not aligned with Him enough to see His glory. So that's us of mercy. The Lord have mercy upon me. He gave us Santoli Bashandarabo Sentelia. Rekende Zuka Mazantolika Basantolia. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, have mercy upon us, O God. Everything that have hindered us in any way from seeing your glory in the course of the journey in life. Father, have mercy upon us and forgive us. And help us, O God, even in this Christian race, O God, to be perfectly aligned with you. In walking uprightly before you, be separated indeed from the world. Be consecrated indeed as you have made us to be. Be set aside. Be set apart for you. 
being holy indeed. For he said, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Ye give a son to the and you hate unholy things. No unholiness will prevail before you, Lord. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for making us know what it takes to see your glory. Therefore, we receive grace, O God, to walk on the path of holiness, O God. All the days of our lives, O God. And as we do, let us see your glory. Let us see your glory. Let us see your glory, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And let us see your glory continually, continually, Lord. Let your glory be revealed even in our lives and through our lives. And let the glory of your presence be revealed to us. Let us dwell in the place of your glory, even in you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Lord, we are so grateful. Blessed be your mighty and holy name, O God. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.